What's going on, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 262 of the Smart Out Moments Smack Talk podcast. This is the Hot Tags edition for the week, where I'm going to be breaking down some of the current events, rumors, and news going on in the world of pro wrestling and sports entertainment from the past few days. As always, I am your host, Tony Mango, and we are going to dive right into this thing with... Something that's a much bigger deal to one person that it actually directly affects, but it actually, despite not being a huge deal for a lot of other people, could end up being something that carries over into something a little bit more interesting in the future, which is Kenny Dykstra was fired from his nonprofit charity job because he missed too many days to make appearances for WWE. Of course, the first thing that comes to mind is that kind of sucks that he lost his job because I'm sure he enjoyed working there to some capacity, and that's where he was, you know, using that money to pay his bills and stuff like that. Yeah, he's making money through WWE with these appearances, but as far as I'm aware, they haven't given him an actual contract. And maybe with this being the case, this could be something that can propel them forward to actually give him a contract, because, let's face it, the Spirit Squad didn't need to come back at all, and when they did come back, they've been steadily used almost every week. And they've been doing a good job. Kenny Dykstra is still a pretty young guy. He's, what, like 30 now or something like that? He might not even be actually 30. Let me double check that while I'm uh, rambling on here. He's 30 exactly. So he's got a lot of years left to him if they really want to bring somebody back into the mix and have him stay around. He's a veteran at 30. A lot of people don't even start until they're a little bit closer to 30 or even sometimes after 30. I think Batista was like... 31 or 32 or something like that when he started, or even later than that, maybe. So Kenny Dykstra is somebody that they can actually bring on board, and whether or not they keep Mikey, that's uh, up in the air. I'm personally not the biggest fan of him, but if they want to keep the Spirit Squad gimmick going, then why not sign him too? But they don't need to. That's the thing. Kenny Dykstra can easily work his way into the mid-card of SmackDown, and have his feuds with, you know, Apollo Crews and Callisto and all those other kind of people that are sort of floundering a little bit. But at the same time, he can move over to Raw. He can be probably in the cruiserweight division. I don't know for sure about that if he's 100 and, or 205 pounds or less. But a mid-carter is a perfect role for Kenny Dykstra. He's good in the ring. As I mentioned, he's young. He's trustworthy enough that he knows how WWE works because he's worked with the company for so many years in the past. So I don't see any downside to this, really, other than if WWE doesn't offer him a job. Because if he doesn't get a job to replace that nonprofit charity job, and WWE is going to still string him along a little bit and not really give him any kind of a, a firm, in-place deal, that's kind of shitty on them, because they gave James Ellsworth a contract. And if that dude is worthy of a contract, Kenny Dykstra is definitely worthy of a contract. So... Stay tuned for keeping your eyes peeled for that because Kenny Dykstra might be transitioning to a main roster member sooner than later. I wouldn't be too shocked. I could see this being a situation where he kind of talks to them and he goes, look, guys, I'm missing too many days here. They they uh, canned me because it got to a point where they couldn't rely on me anymore. And now I need some other kind of a job. And if I find another job, maybe I'm not going to be able to work for you guys. And then they go, you know what? Why don't we just sign you to a normal deal? And then I would assume that he would go, sure, awesome, but maybe he doesn't want to do that. I don't really know. I still think, overall, this is going to lead to Kenny Dykstra and possibly Mikey, more than likely, being on the main roster, Spirit Squad just coming to SmackDown, which means SmackDown has a surplus a little bit of tag teams, and Raw might need one of those in the future. I don't know, maybe move over Breezango or... Hype Bros or something like that. Actually, probably not the Hype Bros, because they're one of the few babyface teams, so... I don't know, maybe uh, Vaude Villains or so? That would be kind of interesting. So something to pay attention to going forward. Another thing, and this is something that I don't really know all that much about, uh, WWE is purchasing Heartland Wrestling Association's library. I've never even heard of that, let alone do I know anything about like uh, who appeared there or any great matches or what to look forward to or anything like that. Apparently it's run by Les Thatcher. So I hope whatever deal that they got, they got more Thatcher. Eh, eh. It's terrible. I know that's, <laughs> I have nothing really to say about this one. So I figured that stupid joke will be it. 
the more tape libraries that they raid, the better, I guess, because the more content you can add to the WWE Network, and even though I'm not going to watch this unless something crazy happens and people are like, dude, you missed out on this fantastic match that happened. It was Joe Schmo against uh, Jane Doe and whatever, and you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, unless something like that's the case, I highly doubt I'm going to be checking out Heartland Wrestling Association, but I don't know, maybe there's something good in there. And if you know anything that's good in association with that, go ahead and leave your comments below. Let everybody, including myself, know about that so we can look forward to that in the future when it comes on to the board. But I think that this is another indication of what we've been looking at over the past few weeks where they were talking about whether or not you'd be interested in different tiers and the pricing purchases between other tape libraries and whether or not you would want just the main primary shows or if you would want to downgrade a little bit and not get access to certain things. This is the type of thing that I don't expect anybody really to be like, you know what? Yeah, I really want to buy the network now because we Heartland Wrestling Association. Maybe there's like two or three people. I don't know, but thousands upon thousands, millions upon millions of people. I would assume that this is in the hundreds at most that would be interested in this. But the more content, the better, right? So unless they paid a buttload of money for it, which I highly doubt that's the case, then it's good on WWE. We have more news on that women's tournament, which was set for sometime in 2017. It looks like that's going to be around early 2017. My guess, maybe they're going to start that after the Royal Rumble, but that's no official date yet because early 2017 can mean anything from January, February, March, April, May. Then you start getting into mid, and then, you know, at that point, you're starting to lose track of early 2017. But we now actually have a couple names that are most likely going to be participating in some fashion. Because you got to remember, too, this isn't going to include Raw, SmackDown, or most likely NXT stars. Although they might put some people in NXT that are sort of on the more developmental side, like Danielle Camella. But I would imagine that the majority of these people are going to be from Shimmer and Shine and... Uh, is Glow still around? I don't think Glow's still around. But any of the other variations of indie wrestling ones, the same sort of idea as what they went with the Cruiserweight Classic, where they brought Evolve and Gra Dragon Gate and all that, they didn't really pillage much people from NXT. Gargano, Ciampa, and the older stars that came back, which that would be an inter another interesting thing too, is we haven't heard of any older stars that are going to come back into the tournament. Although I would assume that that's not going to be the case here because I don't think that there's that many women that are wrestling that have been a part of the company and still would want to participate in anything like that. Maybe Victoria, but I doubt that's the case. So the names that are coming up right now, at the very least, are Evie, who you might remember from, I think it was a Monday Night Raw appearance, although she, I think, more than likely just ended up popping up on NXT. Very cute girl. I know a lot of us during the chats at the time were just kind of like, oh, who is this girl? I wonder if she's going to be a part of everything. I wouldn't be shocked if she got signed after this because the same thing applies to the Cruiserweight stuff. It seemed like they took half those people and maybe they'll take half of these. I don't know. We have Heidi Loveless, which I don't know anything about. I've heard the name before, but I've never really looked into her. That's kind of the case with a lot of these different women. I'm not too sure where they're from or whatever like that. There's uh, Nixon Newell, and I don't know anything about her. She's Welsh, and she looks cute. So I'm totally down with that. Kimberly, I know I've heard that name before. She's in uh, CZW, which is around my area. It's actually like 10 minutes away from me. And I've heard her through the grapevine and everything else like that. Same thing for Deanna Parrazzo. She actually has been a part of the OTW uh, indie fed that I'm actually involved with. And she's made her appearances on NXT and such. So I'm a big fan of uh, Deanna. And Rachel Ellering is probably going to be in the mix as well. So we've got a couple names that we're used to, a couple names that maybe some other people are more used to than other people, and some that could be completely brand new. That's only a few names, and they're not 100% confirmed yet, so don't start talking about which one of these is going to end up winning. You never know, although these are just some names that are rumored, and for the most part, the rumors that were happening last year for the Cruiserweight Classic ended up panning out for the most part, so... I don't know why I repeated it for the most part twice there, but hey, I don't feel like editing it out. Uh, that's the case that we can be, look forward to for the women's tournament. They haven't given a name for it yet, although it's probably going to be something like the women's classic because they don't really think of too crazy of ideas. Women's uh, classic tournament seems like the type of thing that they would go with, but I kind of hope something a little bit different. I don't know. 
So we don't know the time yet, although they're aiming for early 2017. We don't know all the competitors, but that's a couple names, six, seven people that might be involved. And then we don't know the name of it, but stay tuned for more information about that. If I end up learning anything more, maybe I'll do some kind of an update on like the comments or something like that. I'm certainly not going to do some big, uh, some big small package. I was about to say that makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. I'm not going to do a whole small package dedicated to it. If they announce over the next two days that a couple more names are involved or whatever like that. So just pay attention. I'll drop something in the comments or maybe I'll talk about it next week or whatever. So let's talk about the two bigger stories going on here. 205 Live had its premiere tonight. I wrote up an article on e-wrestling news that you can check out. I'm going to be summarizing a little bit of it here and just kind of repeating myself. So if you already read the article, too bad you're going to hear my opinions again. If you haven't read the article yet, then you listen to this. You're probably going to get the majority of it. But whatever I don't talk about, check the article out. But before I need to talk about that, I need to talk about how they moved a show off, put it in the garbage to make room for 205 Live. There is not going to be any more episodes of WWE Superstars, which makes sense to me. If you're going to have Superstars and Main Event, I still don't like those two names for a TV show because to me, Superstars is just like calling a show WWE Wrestlers, and that is dumb. And then WWE Main Event is like, well, that's never Main Event quality stuff. And by default, you need a Main Event of Main Event so dumb. I would have rather had them keep Saturday Morning Slam or, I don't know, bring back one of the older shows that they've done before, Sunday Night Heat or, I don't know, Velocity. I hate those titles too, but anything I think that you used to do in the past might be better off than just doing Superstars and Main Event. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. The point that we're talking about here is Superstars is no more. What they're going to be doing instead is they're going to be taping main event before Monday Night Raw. And that's going to basically just be the main event thing. So the downside to this is it means the people on SmackDown aren't going to get that extra hour to be able to compete. So we're not going to see the guys like Apollo Crews and Kurt Hawkins and the Hype Bros and all those people that didn't get a chance to do anything. We're not going to see them on their separate thing, which means SmackDown is now still just a two-hour program where you need a little bit more breathing room, whereas Monday Night Raw is three hours and has the Cruiserweight division, which has their own TV show, and has another show. It's really odd, and I don't know why they're necessarily doing it that way, but a whole bunch of things are off here. One of the things I complained about with the 205 Live, which, uh, let me backtrack a little bit on that. One of the things I complained about, that's kind of making me seem like I didn't like it. I did like 205 Live, and I'll get to that in a minute, but something that was off was their rearrangement of SmackDown and then 205 Live and then Talking Smack. It was so weird for them to go from SmackDown to a different program to let's talk about what happened on SmackDown. It seems more logical for it to go 205 Live and then SmackDown and then Talking Smack. But I'm assuming that the reason why they did that is because they don't want to have something at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on the network, and they would rather have that be at 10 o'clock, although it's just awkward to me, and I don't really like that at all. But the fact that they have to record Talking Smack, and they have to do the SmackDown pre-show, and they have to do 205 Live, plus the two hours of SmackDown, means that I can kind of understand why they wouldn't want to record main event before they, beforehand too, because that's a lot to kind of ask those people on Tuesday nights to do. Monday night, Raw people are a little bit used to some little bit of extra stuff, but they're still just keeping one hour show. They're not recording superstars and main event. It's just main event now. So no more superstars, which I'm okay with in the grand scheme of things. I think that superstars was... A horrible idea in some capacities and a great idea in some capacities because giving people a chance to shine where they didn't get a chance on the normal shows is good. However, if the reason why those people are never getting on the main shows is because you don't actually value them, nobody's going to care to watch them on Superstars or Main Event. How many times have we had something on either of those shows that actually mattered? Maybe, I don't know, we've had these shows for six, 
seven years, something like that now. Maybe even more than that, actually. I'm not too sure. I can't think of a single time, really, that anything happened. No title changes come to mind. No big storyline changes. No heel turns or babyface turns or information about a new pay-per-view or anything like that. It was basically just the same thing that it's going to continue to be, which is matches where Darren Young and Curtis Axel fight Jinder Mahal and Bo Dallas. And really, who gives a shit about that? So I guess this is kind of that sink or swim sort of thing, where if you're on SmackDown and you're not good enough to be on those two hours of the show, then maybe you're not good enough to be on SmackDown. And maybe if you are working with that safety net of main event and you don't have that anymore, maybe you should go over to Raw and get that Superstars treatment or something. I don't know. I don't like how this could go down, which is to leave a couple people out of the mix and for superstars to have gone away just to make for main event this other proving ground for nobodies. At the same time, I can't complain really because I never watched superstars, so it's not like I'm losing something that I liked. So I'm curious to see if anybody did watch superstars, and if it did, what do you think about this? Leave your comment below. But... Let's talk about 205 Live. It made their debut episode tonight. Premiere was pretty good. We had, I think it was three matches. The Bollywood Boys defeated Drew Gulak and Tony Nese. Then we had the debut of Jack Gallagher. He defeated, I think it was Aria Davari, if I'm remembering correctly. It was less than uh, two hours ago, but I had a long day. Uh, we also had a title change. Rich Swan defeated Brian Kendrick, which I'm going to start off with that. Not a fan. And I've talked about Rich Swan in the past, how I'm not the biggest supporter of his overall. I like the guy to a certain extent, and I don't want it to seem like this is something where, you know, I I didn't want him to win because screw him, he should be jobbed out or anything like that. Far from the case. I don't think that he's bad. I just think that there's much better people involved. And if you look at the roster, it's only 16 guys, but we've got TJ Perkins, Brian Kendrick, Lindsay Dorado, Grand Metalik, I feel like Tony Nese a lot. I think that Cedric Alexander is great. I I think that Aray Davari is underrated. Jack Gallagher is interesting, although I haven't warmed up to him as much as some other people. I think that Akira Tozawa is awesome. So Rich Swan would have been towards the bottom of the list to me, actually. And I don't really like the idea that he's going to be the new Cruiserweight champion. I think that TJ Perkins was a good champ. I think that Kendrick was... Probably the best choice to lead this division going forward, at least for a little bit. Not forever. He doesn't need to hold the title for two years or anything, but I think that that would have been a better choice. And Rich Swan, he strikes me as a mid-carder, kind of. He's the guy that should, you know, pop the crowd a little bit with the dance stuff and whatever, but then maybe lose to somebody else. Lose to, like, a Noam Dar or lose to... Well, I mean, we don't really know who the heels are going to be all that much. We know that Tony Nese is playing heel, but still doesn't strike me as much of a heel. And Drew Gulak's definitely a heel. We know the Bollywood boys are definitely baby faces, so that's something. Ho Ho Loon is <laughs> I mean that guy's not gonna be a heel. So Rich Swan, kind of that like mid card, upper mid card baby face guy. Would have rather had seen him get a little bit more time before he won that title. Not a big fan. But the match was good, so I can't complain about that. And it is just a Cruiserweight Championship, and I understand that they would also want to do a title change on the premiere episode because it's something interesting, and people are like, oh my god, you never know what's going to happen on this kind of thing, even though you pretty much know what's going to happen on every episode of Monday Night Raw and every episode of Monday Night, uh, Friday Night, Friday Night, Monday Night, Tuesday Night SmackDown, and NXT and all that. There's not really that many surprises, but this did have a closer feel to NXT than it did Raw or SmackDown for me, which that's a positive because NXT is fun. So I liked that. I was a big fan of Austin Aries on commentary. He had what I thought was the line of the night when he was talking about the Bollywood boys. He said, what, uh, which one's this one? Is it herp or derp? Which was just a stupid heel thing to do, but I liked it. It made me laugh. I think that him going forward, if he stays on that, could be kind of cool. Although, it's, a, it's kind of making me a little bit nervous that they want to put him in the Cruiserweight division. And if he moves up to the main roster, which he should at some point. I mean, give me a break. The guy's ready for the main roster stuff years ago. I don't want him to be a Cruiserweight wrestler. I want him to be a main roster guy. I want him to be wrestling Sami Zayn and Dolph Ziggler and Cesaro and all those kind of people. I don't want to see him against only these 15, 16 other guys. 
So that's something I think that in the future I'm going to either be really down on or just kind of look back and go, oh, it was cool that he was a part of the Cruiserweight division. Because that's another thing, too. I mentioned this in the article. I I don't know why they didn't specify that this might not necessarily be the full roster. It seemed like that was the case. But we don't have Sin Cara, and he was supposed to be a part of this. And what's to stop the other people that are, are on Raw or SmackDown or NXT from being able to compete in the Cruiserweight division? Because if you're under the 205 limit, why not you know, cross the line and just be able to to sort of wrestle for that too. It's not like you're taking a heavyweight guy and putting him in there and then he could destroy everybody. But Enzo Amori, he's under 205 pounds. Why can't he make an appearance? Or Callisto, he fought Brian Kendrick at Survivor Series. Doesn't that mean that he qualifies to be able to part of the Cruiserweight division? What about the people like Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa? They're both on NXT and they're going to be there for at least a little while longer now that they're the tag team champions, but they were originally supposed to be part of the Cruiserweight division as well. So if they're going to come up, then that means that the division isn't 100% set, although maybe they just changed their mind and they don't want them to be a part of that. I don't know. I'm hoping that it's a little bit more open-ended. I would like to see people make guest appearances, maybe have, say, oh God, who's another person who could be a part of that? Looking at the roster right now, I mean, we have a lot of people like a Braun Strowman. Of course, he's certainly not going to be a part of that, although that would be kind of fun to see him just like, utterly destroy everybody from uh, the whole Cruiserweight division. Maybe Darren Young, maybe he's underneath that. Although, maybe he isn't. Let's see. He's billed at 239. Okay, well, your future is not going to go anywhere with that. Maybe Epico and Primo could have some kind of a success there. I don't know. They're pretty small. Neville, I think, is probably past the weight limit. Let me double check that. No, 194. Neville would be a perfect guy that could kick ass in this division. So if they bring these people on board and they allow for a little bit of flexibility, that's the better way to go. We didn't get anything that said specifically that that was or wasn't the case, but I'm hoping that they at least keep this in mind because, I mean, the worst thing that you can do is when you have 16 guys, you get a couple of those guys injured where people get tired of them, where you have to fire one or suspend one of them or something like that. You're starting to run out of people, so I think that they've got more than enough people that they can bring into the mix. Surprise appearances, little guest crossovers and stuff like that. I think that that'd be kind of fun. And then if they move people up from NXT and you take their place on Raw and SmackDown, maybe you can grab a guy like a Callisto who isn't really doing that great in the mid-card. Maybe put him in the Cruiserweight division and have him be one of the big stars there or something like that. So uh, The matches themselves, as I mentioned before, the title match was good even though I didn't like the outcome. Bollywood Boys are a good tag team, although they're really dorky. And I think that they could be fun going forward. I like that match. Good enough. Jack Gallagher doing something completely different from the other two, so that was fun to see because he's wrapping up Aria Davari and, you know, that's not just drop kicks and hurricanranas and everything like that. So I enjoyed the show quite a bit. I think that it's going to be interesting going forward. I'm sure I'm going to watch it every week. If you have not paid attention to the fact that we do the coverage of it, Caden, who has done the Raw and SmackDown coverage for a while now, is doing the coverage for 205 Live. So give the guy a pat on the back. He's doing three shows a week. Isn't that awesome? So if 205 Live ends up continuing the way that it was tonight, it'll be at least a good enough show to be able to check out on a weekly basis, kind of like NXT. Maybe you don't necessarily need to watch it all the time. Maybe you want to skip and then binge watch or... You know, if you've got a match going on that you're not interested in, you don't have to watch it. But it's an hour, which is so much more digestible than the two-hour episodes of SmackDown or the three-hour episodes of Raw. But at the same time, if you're watching SmackDown, then you're basically watching three hours of Raw, three hours on Tuesday nights, an hour of NXT, and then pay-per-views. And then you got all the other things like the story time and the interviews and podcasts and all that crazy amount of content, but I do think overall, Superstars going away to make room for 205 Live, I gotta say it's a thumbs up. It's something where I'm actually going to check out 205 Live, and I wasn't watching SmackDown since, God knows, uh, maybe the second episode of the show or something like that, so if you're gonna look at this as a unilateral, is it a thumbs up, a thumbs down, no matter what? Only positives coming out of this. Superstars, 
See ya. 205 Live could be a lot of fun. That's it, though, for this week's hot tags, at least as far as Tuesday night. As I mentioned before, leave your comments below. Tell me what you think about these different topics. And uh, we've got the Ask Him coming up with everything else with the IWC outreach. That's going to be posted sometime tomorrow afternoon or so, based off of when I'm recording this. Then probably tomorrow night is when we're going to be doing our predictions for TLC 2016. So blah, blah, blah. You guys know the score by now. Keep paying attention to all that stuff, as well as the post show for TLC coming up on the channel and the website over the next few days. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Give this video a thumbs up. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And I just want to thank you again for watching. So this has been another Smart Out Moment, and I'm being counted out. Ah!